We have had such a blast partnering with you, our community, in creating Living West Michigan, a place we can unify and celebrate the people, places, and things that make our home so special. We appreciate everyone who opened their doors and lives to us in order to share their stories. And as a thank you, we wanted to do the same. So here's a behind the scenes look at our crew as they worked with you all season long. From its conception, um, in talking with our general manager, Jim Rademacher and, and Phil Lane, when we first started talking about this, you know, a long time ago, we thought about getting into the community and talking with people, finding out, you know, what are some of the not necessarily in the news types of things that people are doing or experiencing, a lived experience, and it, it could be something fun and adventurous, but it could also be something close to the heart. Feeling good? Sounding good? Yeah. All right. When we started, I think Pride of Place was like huge. We wanted people to watch the show and feel like, oh, I didn't know that was in my area, or oh my gosh, I've been there before. I'm so proud to, you know, call this place home. It has so many cool things here in West Michigan. Well, uh, we want to make an uh, impact here in our community. I think we were like kind of intimidated when the idea of this show first came around because it was like really broad. We didn't necessarily know what it was supposed to be focused on. And I think that that's what I've learned to love about it. Something we wanted to do was to just not have it feel like it's the same thing. We don't want to do the same types of things. We wanted to do really cool, impactful stories. We really wanted to showcase some really unique places that maybe you know about, but you don't know everything about. Love A, that we're out in the community, that we are experiencing new places and people that perhaps we don't know or haven't come in contact with before. And if you're talking about things that are out of our comfort zone, I love talking to people, so that is not uncomfortable. Maybe some of the encounters we had, and I think you're leaning in for me, and the birds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Getting comfortable. Johnny Agar lives in West Michigan, but he's so much more to that. He lives West Michigan with his challenges of cerebral palsy. He lives it to the fullest. For one who attends Legacy Stables and perhaps with Karen's connection, which is perhaps a special needs uh, person, gets to use the horse to relax, to work on muscle tone and more. but the DNR segment was just so fun, the entire thing. It was super, super fun to interview Heidi, have her take us along the trail and show us the efforts that they're doing to conserve uh, the forest there in Saugatuck. And then going out and shooting B-roll of the beaches. I love the beaches and I love being outside, so doing that was awesome. Thumbs up. I think the pack was really memorable for me. So Melina, who is our video production specialist, she also does a great job hosting. We set up an interview. She was going to host it from start to end. I'm not as handy with a camera as she is, but I got to play videographer and watch like her ask all these questions and hold her really cute dog at this indoor dog park. And then afterwards, I got to film with you guys, with the crew, inside the little dog cage. I could have been there for days. I think that was my favorite shoot. I want to get you on my camera, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Our graphic designer, Brooklyn, came with us with six different pitches for the logo. Keeping that unified throughout the show, our, our, all of our name and title graphics are reflective of that logo. The colors we use in places like the end credits and even in like the paint transitions that are in the show are all the exact colors from 
the logo. What I'm most proud of for this logo is that it lends itself so well to a larger brand. It's not just a cool looking icon. It also has the ability to be torn apart and have like just the sun or just the waves. And having those three sections represents the people, places, and things. And in the future, we can even look to changing out the icons that are on it, the sun, the waves, and the person, and having different variations of the logo depending on what's being covered in the show. So. In that sense, there's even more space for the logo to evolve over the life of the show. Honestly, it's really cool to look back at like the entire process as a whole from the idea being sparked a couple months into us being hired to now like we created an entire show and we got a bunch of new equipment, which really helped. Always been something I've been interested in. I love cameras and all the equipment and trying to get the best out of them. And we were presented with a lot of opportunities to make stuff look really good. I loved the involvement of even our crew's children. Our director, Zach, his daughter had been in two of our segments, but I think she even went to just the third one just to hang around and have fun. Keep, keep waving. <laughs> you know, getting out of my comfort zone and being a host for a day was pretty cool, but also involving my dog in that was really neat. It was really fun to see like all my family and friends then watch it back and almost be happier that Bean made his camera appearance versus me, but I can't really argue with that because it was, it was really cool. We also uh, had a very exciting collaboration with Jay Schwenke, who some may know from his program, Life in Bloom. We were able to collaborate with Jay on producing some segments for this show, which demonstrate various ways that you can make floral arrangements. And, you know, we got our hosts involved into that and we, we did that all here in studio. He's a very, very talented individual who has a wonderful show on PBS that airs nationwide. And uh, we're so glad that he was a part of the show. Every time I uh, meet somebody who moves here from a big city, they are blown away by the level of talent that we have in this community. My favorite segment of the show is the Northern Lights segment. And I'm not just biased because I appear in it, also just because I feel very strongly about that organization. For people at my stage in life who have graduated college and don't play professionally, there aren't really opportunities to do marching band. For Living West Michigan to put a spotlight on an organization that we have here that's kind of the only of its kind anywhere near us, it's very exciting to me. Wonderful. A show like this is so unique, I think, because there's no agenda to it, right? We were given just free reign to tell people's like raw story. And there's so many different people. We did so many different things in every single aspect, stuff that I would have never thought we'd do. And we needed every single person to make it happen. Yeah. Hey, go ahead. Hi there, I'm Jennifer Moss. I'm with Candace Smith and we're in downtown Grand Rapids. And guess what? We're going on a ghost tour. The host is, is lucky to be able to be seen, but there's so much behind the scenes that you share with us. The, the taking of the pictures, the working of the audio, holding of the horse if needed, perhaps picking up the pieces in the mud room. Okay. That's it, now we're being real filmed. I'm such a- With a show like this, it's cool because you get to see diversity in so many different ways, but play out in a super positive light. And I think you just get people at their core, like doing what they do living in West Michigan. So I think it shows really well, actually, who makes up our landscape here in West Michigan, who our neighbors are. <laughs> Everyone adds their creative touch. Spencer and Melina do just an excellent job just pulling all the video together and all these stories that we shoot. I mean, it's just amazing. Like I said, we can't do this show and all of our production assistants, everyone who's partaken and taken part, even those who talked me into getting those birds on my shoulder, that is, a, I mean, we just have a great team. And so it's been a great time pulling together to bring these stories to life, living West Michigan. We're living it as we do it and having fun at bringing it to the community as well. With Living West Michigan especially, 
Spencer and I have very heavily kind of taken it over and made it our show, which has been really cool. So could you uh, introduce Saga Tuck to the park? Just where are we here today? Oh yeah, so today we're at Saga Tuck Dune State Park. It's about like some of the food trucks that are coming to Riverside and some of the items that they might serve. Even our individual friendship outside of the show has grown because of the show, and I really am thankful for that. <sighs> so sweet. Wow. It's fun to be able to work with people that are also really passionate about it. So also all the PAs come in and you come in, Chase, and it's like, it's really great to be able to see people grow to love something and grow to make it their own. <laughs> Our mission at PBS is to educate, inform, inspire, and entertain. This is what happens when you have a group of dedicated people to come together and to make a show that fulfills the mission, not only on screen, but off. Whereas like we are collaborating in a way that is telling stories like this on a grander scale. It's been really great to see everybody's own contribution come together and make this incredible show.